two awesome projects and I'm really nervous and I can literally feel my heartbeat through my headphones. <laughs> okay, um let me start sharing. So, um hi everyone. My name is Gaurav and uh, I'm the only one who worked on this project. Uh I literally thought about this project when I started working with Thinkable and in the packet project. So, let's take a look uh what we're going to cover. Uh, I'll take a brief look at what exactly Tinkerbell does, the motivation behind this project, uh, how it really helps, and what are the next plans for this. Tinkerbell is a product from, it's an open source project from Packet. This basically is a bare metal provisioning engine which is provided for the community. Uh, the intention with this slide here is to get you familiarized with the terms. So when I say hardware, I basically mean a JSON formatted uh, data around your bare metal server, uh, which is going to contain details like maybe a unique identifier for your hardware, what kind of architecture you have, and uh, maybe the storage details about your system, uh, the MAC address, and all those details. Now, when we talk about templates, it's a YAML-based template, and uh, it's it is the base of how you define your workflows. We will take a look at an example. Uh, now, when a work, we talk about workflows, it's a combination of your hardware and the template. When you create a workflow, you use a template and, a tar and you target a particular hardware, maybe one or maybe multiple. Now, the, the motivation behind this project. So, so far we have been dealing with very limited amount of hardware, maybe using your local system or maybe using one or two systems in the packet environment. The, the original goal which packet had and what we also vision as the engineers on the core team is that let's say if I am a data center manager, what I want to do is, okay, let's use one, use one node as a controller and maybe spin up or provision or do some basic configuration on all the systems that I have in my, in my data center, which will be very, very efficient and easy with Tinkerbell. Now, the pain was, if you want to use Tinkerbell at the moment, you have to do it with the CLI. Now, people like me and a lot of you, are we are in love with CLI, but if we can color things and make things more easy with a few clicks, why not? So, and also when it comes to managing data at our, as like I said, hardware is our JSON data and it's pretty bulky when it comes to huge uh, data centers. So, uh, Tink Wizard is a general purpose UI. Uh, I originally named it as Fron. Uh, Fron is actually the Disney character who is a friend of Tinkerbell, but I later thought maybe Tink Wizard was a better idea and they were existing projects with the name Fron. So it's a simple UI which allows you to manage your templates, hardware, and workflow data using a simple UI. Um, and what you can do is you can, maybe even if you're on a mobile and you have the data on your platform, what you can do is you can simply do some clicks and in no time you can have a workflow ready. Uh, let's take a quick demo and then we will jump back to slides. Let's head over to Tink. So this is the about Tinkerbell, Tink Wizard page and this is yet to be filled and that's why the logo. So at the moment, I don't have any templates created and I don't have any hardware data that is available. So let's go ahead and first upload the the hardware data. What you can do is you can choose a file and uh, let's say I want to go with the hardware data one. It's up to you how do you want to organize it. As soon as you select your hardware data, this is rendered here. And let's say now in Tinkerbell, it's really important that each and every hardware has a unique identifier. If you do not have an identifier, let's say for this file, there is no identifier, you get a warning, okay, your hardware data is missing this field, this mandatory field, and there are instructions how you can generate it. Also, if you have a minified form of your JSON, that will also be take, accepted and be rendered in a beautiful format so that it's easy for you to read. Let's submit this and the hardware data is submitted. If we go back to list, we can see that this is the data and we have a few details which uh, in future I will I would like to customize. But for, for now, we have this minimal details, highly important. 
Now let's create a template. Let's choose a template file. Uh, and as you can see, uh, I cannot select any JSON file or anything. I can only select the TMPL file, which are template files. Now this is mandatory to provide a template name. So let's give it a name. Let's submit and as we can go here, now we have our template ready. Awesome. Now, how do you create a workflow? You go to workflows, go to create. Now, if I choose this template, this, you see this hardware devices section is populated. This is coming from here. If I change this, this automatically changes. Um, now, definitely I cannot edit it while creating the, the workflow, but I can go ahead and inside my list, I can select my template. I don't want to use work for, let's go ahead and change this to device. Upload it, you are done. Let's go to workflow. I hope it doesn't break. Uh, let's go to create, select a template and we have our device here and similarly updated here. Now what you have to do is either provide your unique identifier as MAC address of that particular hardware or use the IP address. Uh, this is going to be a, a future aspect because at the moment you, what you have to do is sneak back in onto your hardware and then manually grab the the MAC address at the moment. This is a future plan that the MAC address will be auto selected from your choice of hardware. Let's go back, come here, provide the MAC address, submit and your workflow is created. If I go back to list, I can see this is in a pending state. Uh, this is a template associated with a hardware as being rendered here. Now you can, what you can do is check the details, which is a future scope, duplicate the same workflow, which will be targeting the same hardware with the same template, or you can delete a workflow, which is kind of hanging in state. Um, now this is what is in working state at the moment. The future plan is to have something like this. Let's say I create a few workflows and as we go ahead, we will definitely have data in a database. So this is all coming from a dummy data at the moment. You can, you will be able to see how many workflows have been successful for me, how many are in being timeout, how many failed, how many have been in pending state for some time and how many are running. And these cards are going to show you the details of your workflow in execution. Uh, in future, you will be able to click these icons here um, these links here, and then you can get details about your workflows, which is again, future scope, <laughs> still in progress. Uh, let's jump back here. So what's, uh, what's next? Uh, this is my second project for open source project, and I don't want to do the mistakes I did with my first one. So what I'm going to do is make a, make my first release so that users can try it. And at least I can have, get a, original feedback so that uh, I can improve. I plan to do it by June 15th. Um, the dashboard needs a lot of work, which is definitely going to be my release 1.0, probably by the end of this month. And then I don't want to market marketize this. So I will be promoting Tinkerbell and definitely I want to promote Tink Wizard with it. So which is going to be an ongoing process. Contributions are always welcome. If you are into UI, please do help me because I'm not a UI person and I could really use some help there. And yeah, if you have any other further ideas, we can just definitely discuss about it. To support me, uh, the work, you can start on GitHub and tweet about us the, for the whole project. That's it. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, hey, Garo. Suraj hey. Yes, uh, the, the UI looks great, by the way. What did you. you use to make it? Uh, I'm, I'm using a predefined uh, template which is for dashboard and I'm using go templates plain HTML and CSS I see Ooh, looks really good thank you